Hello everyone. Now we will discuss about how does antimicrobial resistance exactly develop. I am sure that many of you have been waiting to learn the answer to this question as to how antimicrobial resistance happens in the first place. What are the causes for the same? So let us first have a look at this image which tries to make us understand what antimicrobial resistance is all about in brief so that we revise what we have learnt in the earlier videos. So in the first half of the image that's on the top, you can see that if a bacteria does not have resistance to an antibiotic, you will see that once the antibiotic is administered, the bacteria will die. Okay? So, the moment antibiotic is administered into the patient who is suffering from infection, the antibiotic will start killing the cells which is responsible for causing the infection. And as the cells start dying, you will see that the patient starts becoming better. But if the microorganism which is causing the infection has resistance towards the antibiotic, then in that scenario, you will see that even if you use the antibiotic to treat the patient, the patient doesn't improve. His condition, his or her condition doesn't improve. It goes on becoming worse because bacteria is not at all harmed by the antibiotic. The bacteria is having resistance towards the antibiotic. Now, as we move ahead, we need to understand why this happens. There are so many different reasons for antimicrobial resistance. Selective pressure, mutation, gene transfer, these are all more of, you know, technicalities which talk about how antimicrobial resistance takes place. But of course, there are some, you know, human activities which do promote, which do induce which lead to spread of antimicrobial resistance. So that includes inappropriate use of antibiotics, you know, lack of infrastructure and diagnostics, inappropriate use or heavy usage of antibiotics in hospitals, use of such agents in agriculture, various kinds of, you know, farming, which we'll speak about. And several other human activities, that is anthropogenic activities, which are leading to antimicrobial resistance. So we will speak about each one of them in detail in parts. So let us first begin with some technicalities and I'm going to try to make this concept simpler so that even non-biology or non-science background people can understand what it basically means. Let us say we have 100 cells of a bacterial species which is responsible for causing an infection. Okay, 100 cells of it. Now you know an antibiotic which can kill these bacteria and hence you provide that antibiotic where these 100 cells are. So you are expecting that all 100 cells should die. But let me tell you that it may happen that out of these 100 cells, 98 of them die. Maximum of them are dead. But two of them have resistance and they can manage to survive even in presence of these antibiotics. So 98 are dead to survive. Now these two have resistance inherently okay so they can manage to survive even in presence of the antibiotics they will still multiply and now the progeny the offsprings of these two cells are the ones which also have resistance towards the antibiotics because you know normally the characteristics are passed from parent cell to the offspring cell so these two which survived even in presence of antibiotic will now have an army of cells 
of microorganisms which are just like them which also have resistance so now the infection that this patient is suffering from which is caused by such an army of bacteria which has resistance towards the antibiotic it is going to be extremely difficult and challenging to treat such an infection so this phenomena is called selective pressure wherein in presence of an antimicrobial agent the ones which survive the survivors will replicate will make their offsprings and they will become dominant and stronger in causing an infection so this is what we refer to as selective pressure in the next part of the video we will try and understand two more technical such scenarios which is related to mutation and gene transfer and we'll try and understand how they contribute to antimicrobial resistance so till then stay tuned <laughs>